app work or not? Um, it is a major hassle. Um, <clears throat> when people wear it, when they do wear it successfully, they still tend to wear it less than four hours a night. Um, some people swear by it. Some people say that it really works. But what's the scientific evidence? I'm going to cover an article, um, the New England Journal article from 2016, which would indicate for big things like heart attack, stroke, uh, death, it doesn't really help. Um, but that same study also would indicate a good reason why so many people are big fans of CPAP. You know, the bottom line is there's, it, it is the mainstay of uh, OSA, SBD, uh, obstructive sleep apnea, uh, sleep disordered breathing. Um, <clears throat> that and some uh, oral devices for sleeping. Sleep problems, apnea, is a huge, huge issue. It's a killer. It, met, it uh, increases heart attack, stroke, diabetes, you name it. But we just don't have the types of uh, treatments that, uh, that we want yet. The question here is, does, sleep, uh, does CPAP work? Again, the major uh, mainstay for treatment. You can see, when you look at this picture, that's not really um, very conducive to sleep. And look at this. It's like having the, uh, you know, the, the alien on your face. Some people have had a um, sense of humor and say, well, you know what, will this help me sleep or take over the world? Uh, maybe both. Actually, if you get better sleep, you feel like you can take over the world. So maybe it's true. And oh, I did mention the alien, didn't I? <clears throat> There's actually a sleep mask, which, uh, which is like the alien. Now let's go to the New England Journal article. This was in, uh, September, published in September 8, 2016, New England Journal. Uh, CPAP, for prevention of cardiovascular events and obstructive sleep apnea. Now this was a large uh, group, multi-center. There were actually 79 centers involved with it. Um, and they had a name for it, the SAVE investigators and coordinators. Now what did SAVE mean? Um, sleep, apnea, cardiovascular endpoints, SAVE. Now how did they get that? That looks like SACE. They're uh, using the V out of, um, out of cardiovascular. Again, it's so much easier to have a good acronym that you can refer to when you're working in one of these studies for years. Now, what did they find? And, how, and what were the, I've already told you a little bit about, you know, the findings weren't that exciting or impressive, at least in terms of uh, heart attack and stroke. Uh, and how did they do this? Well, here's what they did. They looked at, um, they compared treatment. The treatment group had CPAP plus the usual treatment and, you know, like sleep hygiene, things like that. Um, <clears throat> the other group, the control group, had just usual treatment with no CPAP. They originally planned to do 5,000 people. They ended up, for various reasons, uh, having to reconfigure and get 2017. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the the way that they achieved uh, at, at least the number that they want, that they were able to analyze. Uh, these were people between 45 and 75 years of age. They had moderate to severe sleep apnea, and they also already had evidence of um, cardiovascular disease, myocardial infarction, stroke, hospitalization, um, and they looked for uh, progression of this heart disease, cardiovascular disease. Now, most of the participants were men with uh, moderate to severe uh, apnea, obstructive apnea. In the CPAP group, um, the mean duration of adherence to CPAP therapy was, guess how long? 3.3 hours per night. The mean apnea hypopnea index um, <clears throat> decreased from 29 events per hour at baseline to 3.7 events per hour. So the CPAP actually worked in decreasing uh, these events, these snoring, apneic events. Um, at a mean follow-up of 3.7 years, the primary endpoint uh, occurred in 229 patients in the CPAP group and 207 patients in the usual care group. So 17% in the CPAP, 15% in the other ones. 
So did e CPAP actually even cause damage? I, you know, there's not enough to show that. And we'll look at, actually the uh, hazard ratio was uh, 1.1. The confidence intervals were 0.9 to 1.3. So it, again, uh, it, it didn't appear to do damage. Um, no significant effect on an individual or uh, other composite endpoint was, um, was observed. CPAP significantly reduced snoring. It significantly reduced daytime sleep, sleepiness and improved health-related quality of life and mood. So the conclusions were therapy with CPAP plus usual care as compared to usual care alone did not prevent cardiovascular events in patients with moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea and cardiovascular disease. That's depressing. That's frustrating. Um, now, one of the best ways when you're looking at an article uh, to figure out how good was the article and where were some potential problems is to go to their figures, their graphs, their charts. And as I mentioned in the beginning, this is uh, one of the areas that you wonder about. They started with 15,000 people to assess them for eligibility in this study. And you can't see it down at the bottom because of my recurring problems with the video side, but you had 1,284 uh, followed through uh, one through the um, the study group and 1,256 through the control group, and so you wonder was there anything related? There was a huge non-participation rate, and was there anything related to the non-participation, um, and also to the endpoints? If so, then that would be the biggest issue in terms of indicating weakness in this study. Now I went through these. Uh, feel free to look it up uh, for yourself. <clears throat> to me, uh, it, it's not that clear that any of this could, uh, uh, that that happened. Here's another thing to look at. It's the randomization procedure. Was the randomization uh, effective? Well, here's one way to, to do that. And in most good studies, you'll see that uh, this listed. They look at age, um, gender, race, medical history, hypertension, medications, all of these things that might be related to um, uh, the problem, OSA, and the outcome, cardiovascular events and death. Um, <clears throat> so let's look at all of those and see if in randomization we had a significant difference. So age, 61.3 uh, versus 61.2, no, that's fine. Uh, male gender, 81 versus 80.7. That's good. Uh, Asian, 63% in both. You know, so as you start going down through here, you'll see the randomization was very effective. How about uh, looking at primary uh, and, sec and composite uh, endpoints? Was there a p-value? So, for example, a p-value below 0 0.05. Um, so, death from cardiovascular diseases, <clears throat> no. And what that means is it half and half either way, uh, 25 and one, 20 in the other. So, again, none of these was below, <coughs> excuse me, 0 0.05. The closest we got was to revascularization procedures, um, uh, stenting or uh, doing a bypass graft. So now let's look at another way. I mean, this is maybe the most easily grasped, quickest, right in front of your face uh, interpretation of this article. This is the group that had CPAP. This is the group that had usual care. This is the cumulative incidence. In other words, the, this, is, this is a timeline or a, um, a, a time chart. When you had a, an event, then you went up this uh, you went up vertically on the chart. So, as you see, they stayed pretty much in line. There's not a significant effect. And as you saw in some of the original uh, statistics, the part of the question was, was CPAP even uh, a risk for having the events? And again, it wasn't from a, prob from a probability perspective. It didn't. Uh, didn't. Uh, now, it did have a huge impact in some other areas. Look at these p-values, uh, 0.05, point, less than 0.001. What was that? Epworth sleepiness scale. 
So it helped immensely with diastolic blood, it helped with diastolic blood pressure. Incredibly with uh, Epworth sleepiness, daytime sleepiness. So that's why these, that's why people that are, that use these and are fans are big fans. Look at anxiety score, uh, depression score. So you're not sleepy, you don't have uh, depression, you feel a lot better. Um, mental component score. Again, huge uh, improvement in quality of life, as it mentioned before. What about um, heart attack and stroke? Mm, no, not so good. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate your 